Hey there, Michelle Saxman here. And I um, wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about um, concussion. There goes the dog, we are live. Um, spend a little bit of time talking about concussion and traumatic brain injury. And some of the things that I've learned and also a really, really exciting opportunity that Nora and I are gonna have next week. And Nora had her brain injury um, actually in 2013 as a result of an automobile accident the vehicle flipped three and a half times and that would have been her first brain injury and it was undiagnosed through the emergency room and I'll get into that in a minute then in April of 2016 she took a strong volleyball hit to the side of the face and that is what led us to the traumatic brain injury um, loss of hearing in the right ear some vision problems the mental acuity she went from I'm gonna I don't know if she was in geometry or trig down to um, like a fourth grade math level. And then in December of this year, she was in an automobile accident, the airbags deployed, and it has been a major setback. And it has been a journey with doctors, with insurance companies. It has been an incredibly painful and long journey. And I wanted to make sure I gave voice to understanding a concussion and what I refer to as the traditional medical industry, what they're looking for, what scale they put our patients on, and why I firmly believe it is the wrong scale that they're using. Again, I am not a doctor. I am the mom of a beautiful young 17-year-old girl who has suffered about six or seven concussions in about three and a half years. So we have a pancake factor of concussions, which I know is not common. But what I wanted to share and make sure people understand, because this is about making sure our voices are heard and that our children, our loved ones are getting the care that they deserve in order to live life to the fullest. Not about getting back to survival, but about the ability to thrive beyond, to seek their fullest potential. So things that I've learned, this is your brain. This right here, just make a fist. This right here is your brain. Okay, and then what happens is, this is what they refer to as, this is the soft tissue. This right over here is the skull. The space that's in between here, I'm gonna call the snow globe factor. And concussions occur in the snow globe region. The skull does not have to be damaged. The brain actually is not damaged. And that is what creates a difficulty in the medical industry because they will put Nora any child with a concussion on the same scale as someone who has suffered a bleeder, a stroke, um, a loss of oxygen, a drowning patient. All of these people are on the same scale as a concussion victim on the traditional medicine scale. So what they're looking for is certain things that our concussion, our athletes that suffer concussions are gonna pass, they're gonna pass those tests but they're still highly symptomatic. And the reason is because it's in the snow globe region. And so when you shake a snow globe, all those little white snowflakes that used to have a consistent pattern of communication have now been all confused. And it's in that confusion is where our symptoms are occurring. So if someone you know has suffered a concussion and they're highly symptomatic, um, highly nauseous, quick to nausea, quick to headache, um, inability to focus, um, using the wrong words to finish a sentence, changing word endings. There is no brain damage, and I agree with that, but there is this neuroplasticity that has been completely shaken and confused. And medical doctors and insurance companies make a determination based upon, um, I think they call it, it's like the Glasgow scale or the Glasgow scale and some other scale and if your person doesn't fit at certain levels, then you're not entitled to certain types of treatment. And I'm okay with that. But don't limit me and say you're entitled to 30 hours of physical therapy. Well, if I have to have 30 hours of physical therapy, I want the best therapy that is out there. So that led me to doing a lot more digging, a lot more research, and ending up with a facility, and I'm gonna post the link down here. Nora and I, super excited to say we're gonna be going to Florida on Sunday to attend the Neuroplasticity, the Brain Center, the Plasticity Brain Center in Orlando, Florida. And they specifically work in that 
snow globe region. And they determine where some of these deficiencies are occurring and work to strengthen those areas so that she can have the best maximum performance when we return. Things that I want to make you aware of that if you know someone who suffered a concussion and they're not getting better, here's something to consider. And that is, you know, if some, when you're eating a meal and your mom will say to you, slow down in eating, it's going to take 15 or 20 minutes for your brain, for your belly to tell your brain that you've eaten. Well, guess what that also means? That means that the communication between the brain and the gut can be broken. And when the communication between the brain and the gut are actually broken, and it's a neurotransmitter break then the microbiomes in your belly don't know what their job actually is to do and how to report back. And then through the intestines and the digestive system, proper nutrients, minerals, supplement, vitamins, all that stuff is not being extracted from the food properly. And you end up with a nutrient deficient system. And these are the things that over time, if you're not getting better, and you know, doctors, traditional medicine is not looking at these things. But what did they say? It's a poor fuel delivery system, chronically deregula deregulated system. Also, want, so that's when someone long term, they're not getting better from their concussion. Something to think about is the brain gut communication. Another thing with the dizziness, confusion, is that the. Um, it's not something that you and I can look in someone's eyes and see, but there's actually an ocular vestibular, um, the eyes are kind of jumping a little bit. What is happening there is, it, again, the eye is healthy, but it's the neurotransmitters are misfiring, or they might even be completely lost in that snow globe. So the eyeball is healthy, the brain is healthy, but the neurotransmitter in that plasticity region is what is calling, causing some of this eyeball jumping. So this is something that can be detected with neuroplasticity and treated. And I don't even know exactly how they're going to do it, but I'm looking forward to learning. Another thing is um, hearing difficulty or hearing like it's in a tunnel. That might be, so again, the ear can be healthy, the brain is healthy, but it's the communication in between. And so when that gets broken, it's called a hearing gap. So these things, what I'm learning is they can be treated if they're properly diagnosed, if they're properly tested for. And traditional medicine, and I'm not knocking any of the doctors or the rehab centers that we have visited here in the Richmond area. I'm not going to speak negatively specifically about any of them. But when you are going to a doctor that is also working with um, the lack of oxygen issues and the bleeder issues, they are not focusing on this neuroplasticity, this snow globe region, and the services that they provide and the therapies that they provide. In my opinion, it's a huge, a major deficit in our community. And then the insurance company is saying that they don't cover certain things. So we've had to step out of traditional medicine. We've had to step out of traditional insurance. And we are so looking forward to flying down to Orlando, Florida and spending a week with the Neuroplasticity Brain Center, the Carrick Institute. Um, there are doctors that are trained through the Carrick Institute that do neurologic chiropractic work throughout the United States. And we just feel so blessed to have the opportunity. I called them on Monday. And they had an opening this Monday for a new patient. So we're super blessed. Um, I really want to thank you all. I, I'm going to ask for continued prayer for our journey, for our healing. And um, I'm going to hope to do a lot more messages because this is not a message just specifically about Nora. This is about making sure our concussion patients, people that slip and fall, hit their head on their ice, as well as the football injuries, lacrosse injuries, soccer injuries, any sports injury. But y'all, there is healing out there. Just keep on digging. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. If you know someone that can benefit from this message, just tag their name down there in the bottom, shoot them a link, or share it. Y'all, this is such an exciting time. I'm so thankful for the opportunity, and I will keep you posted. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.